Why do you fall in love with one person but not another person? A lot of people might like a 10, but if you're a five, then who are you gonna end up getting married to? If she graduated from graduate school and he flunked out of kindergarten, do you think that relationship is gonna last very long? Same age or about? Now, what's kind of the accepted age range? Now, what about the idea that opposites attract? You know that story of Romeo and Juliet? Why do you fall in love with one person but not another person? Well, the sociobiology people, they would tend to say that you fall in love unconsciously with somebody that's a good genetic match or something like that. A lot of people might like a 10, but if you're a five, then who are you gonna end up getting married to? Well, probably someone closer to a five. If she graduated from graduate school and he flunked out of kindergarten, do you think that relationship is gonna last very long? Probably not. Same age or about? Now, what's kind of the accepted age range? Usually five to 10 years with exceptions, of course. Now, what about the idea that opposites attract? And you've probably heard that. That's kind of the complementary theory or complementarity. You know that story of Romeo and Juliet? You know, their families hated each other. And they said, you stay away from him. You stay away from her. This seems to be one of the more difficult topics to discuss. What is this thing called love? It seems everybody has a different idea about love. Why do you fall in love with one person but not another person? Well, the sociobiology people, they would tend to say that you fall in love unconsciously with somebody that's a good genetic match or something like that. Boy, she'll produce nice kids, so I love her. Now. Sometimes women like guys that are tall and muscular. Well, the sociobiologists would say that, well, they would produce a good, you know, gene pool. You know, that's why we like tall, muscular types, or something like that. Now, even though you might like somebody and you say, wow, she's beautiful, she's definitely a 10, you know, a lot of people might like a 10, but if you're a five, then who are you gonna end up getting married to? Well, probably someone closer to a five. We tend to marry people like that. People that are like we are. We tend to really like people that are like we are. And that's homogeneity or similarity. Some people call this the matching hypothesis that we tend to be attracted to somebody that's like us. In fact, you're apt to stay married too if you're married to somebody that's like you are. Of course, the matching part is more than just the physical. Maybe you've seen a couple walking down the street and said, wow, what is she doing with him? Maybe she's a 10 and he's a three or something or the other way around. And what that is, that's when you match up with someone. First you notice the physical package, but then you start adding things in, like their personality, their job, their intelligence, and maybe when you look at the total, you might decide that they're a good match for you, even if physically maybe they're not. What else? Like, let's see what would be some things that, one would be the same educational background. If she graduated, from graduate school and he flunked out of kindergarten, do you think that relationship is gonna last very long? Probably not. Like for example, I recall one student 
in a four-year college a long time ago that she didn't go on to graduate school because she was afraid it would break up the marriage. And he'd only graduated from high school. She's graduated from college, and he kept bugging her about being a college graduate. You're so smart. Why don't you do it? Right? Well, you're the college-educated one. You know, that sort of thing. So she didn't want to have even more of a gap, so she actually stayed down. And you might say, because he didn't want to go up. Now, that's kind of too bad. So, we tend to marry somebody similar in education. Often you met them in school. What else should they be the same about? Um, interests. You'd have about the same interests often, so what else? Maybe the same values? Okay. Same religion? Maybe. Same race? Same age or about? Now, what's kind of the accepted age range? Usually five to ten years, with exceptions, of course. But usually within five to ten years. What else would there be? Socioeconomic status? Age? Education? Race? Religion? Values? Interests? Things like that. Okay, so generally the more similar you are the more apt you are to stay married and that really works but you might say well gee Bob I'm a guy who flunked kindergarten and my wife has a graduate degree or my mom has a degree and my dad never graduated high school or what I don't know he's Catholic and she's Jewish or she's 23 and he's 42 or whatever it might be and hey they've been doing fine that could be, but as a general rule, the more different you are in these, it just increases your probability of getting a divorce. We also tend to find people who have similar politics to what we have. If you're liberal, you'll tend to marry someone that's liberal. Or a conservative will marry a conservative because you don't want to marry someone that keeps telling you you're wrong. So we also marry someone who sort of validates our ideas. We're kind of psychologically comfortable with those people. And as I said, these marriages have a greater chance of lasting. Now, what about the idea that opposites attract? And you've probably heard that. That's kind of the complementary theory, or complementarity. I don't know why it is academics try to make big words out of little words. Instead of the difference theory, you know, they say the complementary theory or complementarity or something like that. But anyway, difference. Well, that could work for magnets. With people, difference is not. It doesn't work as well as similarity does, but it can be a factor. Like if one person is dominant, are they better off with another dominant person or are they better off with a person that's more submissive, that likes people telling them what to do? Probably a dominant person is more apt to marry a submissive person. And maybe he or she likes the other person to be dominant, and that works out okay. So there is something to that. Probably two dominants don't work well. Or maybe two submissives don't work well. What do you want to do? I don't know, whatever. What do you want to do? I don't know, whatever. So maybe, so probably won't work too well. But in general, the research that we have says that people that marry someone that's like they are tend to stay together. One other factor that can bring a couple together is called the Romeo and Juliet effect. You know that story of Romeo and Juliet? You know, their families hated each other. And they said, you stay away from him. You stay away from her. So what did Romeo and Juliet do? Yeah, they got married. So, the Romeo and Juliet theory says the more opposition you face to a relationship from parents or friends or whoever, the more attractive that relationship is to you. The more people say, don't, you shouldn't, the more you want to do it. Pretty interesting, huh? And it turns out these couples usually stay together, too. So, those are some of the things that bring people together. 
And probably the most important thing to remember is a similarity idea that we tend to be attracted to and happy with people who are like us.